Yeah, none of this makes any sense. In the world of Pokemon, those little cute and not so cute creatures that children mostly use for violence come in categories. Uh, groups involving one particular element or theme. These are referred to as types. Currently there are 18 types and a single Pokemon has one or two each. Pokemon of the same type should share some properties at a base level. For example, a fire type Pokemon should have an appearance and abilities involving flame, heat and burning. But the actual types themselves, be it in the world of Pokemon itself, or the people outside of it in charge of making the games and anime, these choices of type are a mess. If this is somehow your first introduction into Pokemon, then A, I'm terribly sorry, and B, you might think that at least four of these 18 Pokemon types would be based on the classical four elements, fire, water, earth, and air. Plenty of other brands in popular culture use this, or at least use the four as a start, so it wouldn't be surprising for Pokemon to do the same thing. Makes sense, yeah. Uh, yeah, you, you would be wrong. Sure, fire and water have their rightful places as two of the three initial starter Pokemon types. These are the types of Pokemon you get to pick from at the start of these games. Air? Well... Oh boy, we'll, we'll tackle that one later, but let's focus on Pokemon's version of Earth. They don't have an Earth type per se, instead we have not one but two Earth adjacent types rock and ground. What's the difference? I'm still not entirely sure. A lot of rock Pokemon seem to have some sort of rock or stone incorporated in their actual forms. Uh, ground Pokemon seem to live in or on the ground. And while a lot of ground Pokemon are subterranean, a lot of them, well, aren't. And yeah, if your qualification for a ground Pokemon is that it lives on the ground, I, I, I got some bad news for you. Like half of the entire Pokedex should all be ground Pokemon. The Pokemon Wiki says that ground type Pokemon have powers and abilities related to the control of ground and earth, which isn't super distinct because yes, as it turns out, most of the ground is made out of some sort of rock. I guess there is dirt as a somewhat distinct thing. I haven't felt quite as dumb as when I googled, is dirt a rock? writing up for this video. Oh, and the answer is, yeah, it is kinda. But yeah, these two should just be Earth and that would fix most of this. Uh, but it isn't, and I can't change it, so it's annoying, and okay, let's move on. And after all that, neither ground or rock is the final type in our starter Pokemon Trinity. So let's get these out of here for the minute. You know what our final part of our big three is? Grass grass type. Uh, let, let that sink in. Really, think about it. Grass type. No, not nature, not plants, not vegetation, trees or flowers, not even fruit or veg, but specifically grass. Why? Why would that be the descriptor that you'd clump all of these plant-based creatures, of which very few of them have designs that incorporate actual grass? It is such a strange choice. It doesn't seem like the best fit that all of these wild animals are associated instead with a rich guy's neatly cut lawn than some tangled vines or some crazy colorful wildflowers or an overpowering oak tree. The element itself, I understand, but your name sucks. Often associated with grass type Pokemon, we have the strange choice of a poison type. In this case, the chosen element isn't terrible, but again, poison is a strange name. Let's look at the definitions for a second. If something is poisonous, it is capable of causing death or illness if taken into the body. It's something you either consume, inhale, or absorb through the skin. If something is venomous, on the other hand, it's capable of injecting venom, usually by means of a sting or a bite. Now, while there are some poisonous animals in our world, there's also a lot of poisonous vegetation. So there's an argument that the poison type could be made somewhat redundant from grass type's inclusion. 
but you'd think that in a game that usually involves making deliberate attacks against other creatures, that, that Venom would be the word of choice. You could probably group the two in with a word like toxin, toxic, toxicity, but poison is not good. Okay, uh, what else? We have electric type. I don't really have a big problem with this one. How about steel type? This one bugs me. Similar to grass type, the choice of label for the entire category is a strangely specific subgroup. They didn't decide the name metal, even though that would cover all of their bases, they chose the distinct alloy of steel. We've also got ice type. I don't like this one. This shouldn't exist because as everyone knows, ice is just water but colder. Why would it have its own separate category by itself? And if you decide to include that solid form, why not the gas form too? Where's the steam type? We don't have a direct air or gas type, so at this point, why the hell not? And none of this is consistent. None of the other types have different forms of the same substance. Why does ice type exist? But for now, let's get weirder. Psychic type is fine, while not based on an actual real phenomenon like fire or electricity, the theme is relatively consistent and coherent. Psychic type Pokemon rely on supernatural mental abilities like telekinesis and telepathy. There's a pseudo spiritual or mystical or even magical element to Pokemon of this type. Not much to complain about. But if you want to look into supernatural elements for problems though, we're not short on them. Enter ghost type. This one does my head in. Let's open the old Google Dictionary again, shall we? Ghost. An apparition of a dead person which is believed to appear or become manifest to the living, typically as a nebulous image. Are all of these ghost-type Pokemon dead? I, I, I don't think so. Apart from a few exceptions, none of these Pokemon really resemble any of the alive Pokemon as counterparts. Unless your regular Pokemon completely changes form and identity once they die, maybe the little Charmander carked it, became a Sinistee in its next life. I guess one way around it would be to rename the category to Spirit Type or something else along those lines. Uh, a few of them could swap over to Psychic Type and have no problem. But for almost all of them, you could probably lump Ghost Types into our next complicated category, Dark Type. Dark Type's description on the wiki is as follows. The dark type is represented from traits that are considered feral and untamable, specifically that born from adverse and intense complex social conditions, to that of traits that evoke a negative-leaning nature, from having a nocturnal day cycle, exhibitions of unusual, cruel, crafty, and clever intelligence, belligerent aggressiveness, the sentient awareness and choice to harm and or inflict ill will, and to that of the negative end of nature and reality, such as the shadows, declination, the survival of the fittest, destruction, comings of darker times, and to the unknown but potentially dangerous aspects of the mysterious and the enigmatic. Apart from that being unusually long and detailed, that whole thing was one sentence by the way, it covered a wide, wide range of what we considered to be dark, meaning it's vague. And if a Pokemon has a mildly edgy or spooky feel, or even if its appearance has a darker color palette, into dark type it goes. But don't get it confused, it is totally different from Ghost Type, supposedly. I would argue it's another rock and ground situation. It's redundant. But dark elements aren't inherently a bad idea. I get the vibe. It wouldn't happen to have a then totally appropriate light type as a thematic counterpart. No? Ah, oh, no. Of course it doesn't. These next three are an odd group to be seen together. At first glance, I understand it. Bug type, dragon type, and fairy type. Sure, dragon and fairy types are sometimes associated. They're both mythological creatures after all. And bugs and fairies are both small fluttery things. But it's a very important complication in all three of these that trouble me. Uh, let me pose you a question. How does someone in the Pokemon world know what an insect is? The animal kingdom as we know it does not exist in that world at all. So what frame of reference do they have to know what a bug is and what it isn't? 
I do, and because of it, it's easy for me on the outside to see what makes sense as a bug type Pokemon and what doesn't. But they haven't got that. You could argue that a lot of them have similar insectoid features, and I'll concede that bug type Pokemon do a decent job with consistent elements in their designs. But if all of a sudden we're grouping these creatures by animal, why isn't there a dog type, or a cat type, or a horse type? There are like 20 different fish Pokemon. But there is no fish type. If you are going to do this, at least cover the main groups in the animal kingdom. This problem extends to the two other types of dragon and fairy. How do they know what a dragon is? What exactly is their concept of a dragon? Does it match our own? A lot of dragon type Pokemon look like dragons, but there's a handful of them that don't. Some fairy type Pokemon look like fairies, but an overwhelming majority of them do not. No, but, but seriously, the only thing linking all of these Pokemon are the color pink. I'm pretty sure whatever fairy means in the world of Pokemon has got to be pretty different from what we think, because this ain't it. With no reference for their namesakes in the Pokemon world, these categories make no sense to exist. Pushing forward, I present you with normal type. Normal. Normal? Now, it's perfectly normal. Normal? To you. What do you know about normal? What does anyone in this family know about normal? Now, wait a minute. <sighs> I, I don't. I, I mean, I, I, I just. What? What? What on earth does that mean? What's normal about them? They're the only Pokemon that aren't bound to some elemental force of nature or otherwise mystical theme. Pikachu is a mouse with electricity. Turtwig is a tortoise with plant stuff. Psyduck is a little duck guy with water powers. Rattata is just a purple rat. That's it. Nothing attached. That is not normal. They're the outliers here. By the very definition, they are abnormal. Most of them just look like ordinary animals, but as I think I've made clear by this point, animals don't exist in their world, and with no other animalistic category to cling onto, they get chucked in the boring category. You're not normal, guys. You, you just lack flair. <coughs> fighting type. This one is ridiculous. First of all, the word fighting. Fighting is an action that you do. That's a different phrasing from pretty much every other Pokemon type we've had so far. Why is this so inconsistent? Second of all, newsflash. Every Pokemon is a fighting type. That is what the game is. That's what Pokemon is. Literally every Pokemon that exists, with the exception of Abra, because the only move he can use is teleport, which can't hurt other Pokemon, but I'm pretty sure every other Pokemon out of the like 900 that exist engage in the brutal animal on animal violence for the entertainment of globe-trotting ten-year-olds. They are all fighting type, why would you make this its own thing? And alongside the absurdity that is fighting type, we have possibly the best example for everything wrong with Pokemon's absolute butchery of a classification system. Our last category left, flying type. This thing has it all. The name, it's ridiculous. Again, flying is an action that a creature can do. It's not a natural or supernatural substance or theme. It's got the same issues as ground type. If a Pokemon isn't ground type or water type, then it has to be a flying type Pokemon. What percentage of the entire roster do you think can fly? I don't want to count it all out, but I bet it's a lot. And there's no reason why every single one of these Pokemon that float, flap, or hover shouldn't be a flying type Pokemon. By definition, they are. Also, the overlapping between categories here is abysmal. Wings or not, dragons are mythical flying lizards, so all dragon types should probably be flying types too. Probably half the bug types have wings, so they're in as well. The majority of fairies as we know them in fictional media have wings and fly around, but considering the lack of fairy-like fairy types, not many would classify. Still a chunk of them are flying types. Oh, and last time I checked, ghosts didn't usually walk around on two feet, so most of these spooky spiritual looking things could fly, or at least float. I'm pretty sure that qualifies. They suck, and this is stupid, flying type is stupid, but that's it. That's the last one. That is, that's our last type. Okay, uh, let's recap. Chuck them all on the screen for a minute. Just, just a mess. 
no grammatical consistency, no thematic consistencies. Nothing about this gives a good reason why these factors, these specific words, are the backbone for Pokemon's entire sorting system. Oh, and as I mentioned before, Pokemon can only have a maximum of two types, even if some may classify for several more. <sighs> Alright. To close, we're gonna forgo our two-type maximum for a second and just see where logic leads us. Here is our subject, Charizard. To start, he's a fire-type Pokemon. He has fire powers, flame breath, etc. That's straightforward. Looks like a dragon, which is basically the only prerequisite for a dragon type. It's got wings and can fly, so it's a flying type. But it's also got legs and can easily walk around, so it's also a ground type. As it is not Abra and can definitely engage in battle, it is also a fighting type, and Charizard is a combination of a core element in fire and an already known creature of a dragon. An element plus a creature? That is Pokemon's bread and butter, and that sounds pretty normal to me. That leaves Charizard with six types total. I'd call this disrespectful degradation of one of Pokemon's main mascots as a success, but there you have it an unnecessarily and unfair critical breakdown of Pokemon's weird categories for their hundreds of fake creatures. And for as much crap as I just gave it, I am still intrigued by the world of Pokemon. I know the new games are supposed to come out soon, and I don't know whether I'll end up playing one yet, but from what I've seen they look pretty good. And yeah, this video is a bit of a joke, and I'm quite aware that it's a bit too late to fix your typing system, but Pokemon, just know that it's a strange, inconsistent mess and I love it all the same. Alright, I'm done. End screen time.